So if you know someone who's a tax preparer, you know, make sure and give them some grace for a couple months out of the year because they do have a, a lot of stress and pressure, um, you know, not just making it through day to day, but just really doing the best that they can for their clients to help them pay the least amount of taxes legally possible. Financial independence. Freedom. Financial picture. Independent financially. Financial future. Financial freedom and wealth. Financial independence. Get your fill. Financial independence and long life. Welcome to another episode of Get Your Fill, Financial Independence and Long Life, where we explore ways to achieve those two goals. And cool people come on to help us who have excellent and very informative information that we need to reach those goals. And that's why I'm very happy today that Jacqueline Campbell with, is with us. She is the president and founder of Campbell & Company, Wealth Advisors and CPAs. She has served as a trusted advisor to families and businesses in the Tampa area since 1993. Jackie, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's great to great to get to talk to you and uh, talk a little bit more about your book as well. And your book. So actually, let's start there since you brought up books. Let's talk about your book, Be Prepared. I think a lot of people are a little bit afraid of being prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it requires a little bit of homework. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I feel like there's like a lot of people feel kind of inadequate when it comes to financial planning. And even though we all would love to leave, you know, millions of dollars to our heirs, I just don't know that. I mean, here's a silly example. I know a lot of people who are afraid to write a will because they think then they're going to die. And it's like, well, well you are going to die. <laughs> not like immediately after you finish your will, but you know, it's pretty much guaranteed. So why not be prepared? So how do you get started when you are helping people and you can t refer it back to the book or just in your practice to help people who are coming to you for the very first time and have not done any sort of financial preparation or planning? Well, you know, it's it's a non-judgment, right? So wherever you are, you are. I mean, that's your GPS. It's it's you can't go back and change anything. We can only start from here and go forward uh, to make adjustments and improvements. And I, I think just being honest and you know, we we can't see ourselves in our own scenario, our own situation, our own movie. Uh, so having a mentor, having someone that's you know, completely objective and has no emotional attachment, I think can really uh, be helpful to kind of getting it all out there. But I think that's the number one thing is to try to detach the emotion um, from things. And, you know, you, you, you said it perfectly. I mean, most people are afraid of taxes and they're afraid of, of passing away. And, and those are, you know, as they say, the, you know, two things certain in life is, is death and taxes. And uh, it's just about dealing with it. You know, the, the things that we're in, intimidated by, um, you know, shouldn't necessarily be something that we completely avoid. It's just kind of like roll your sleeves up and deal with it head on and try to take the emotions out of it and set that aside. Yeah. And what you said is perfect. Like the, the no judgment zone. I, I do think that there's some idea that people think, well, if I go to a financial planner, they're going to yell at me. Like, why didn't you start saving when you were 15 years old? You know, why are you coming to me at 40 with this mess? You know, but it, it's good to hear that that is not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's, you know, it's after you've done this for 30 plus years, I mean, you've kind of seen it all, right? Uh, it's it's kind of like going to a doctor, they've seen and um, heard just about everything. It's just, you know, tell me all your symptoms, tell me what your goals are, uh, and let me see how I can help you to to get through it. And and we, we try to make it as simple as possible. We have a, although there's a lot of steps in a 360 degree plan, I mean, that kind of encompasses everything, uh, your income plan, your investment plan, uh, your legacy plan is certainly part of that, your health and long-term care plan, and of course your tax plan, because uh, it's not just about what you make, it's what you end up keeping after taxes that really matters each and every year. Yeah. And that's a super point too that you bring up. And I think a lot of people are afraid of, that's another big fear is being audited. Oh, I can't take these extra deductions because I'm afraid of being audited. But uh, how do you sort of mitigate that fear with people and how, like explain to us what is this a realistic fear? Is this like rational fear? <laughs> Well, because you hear the horror stories, right? You don't hear of all the the trillions of of positive, you know, impacts and the com people that are in compliance when they're filing returns. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, knowing your players, the IRS is a player that you're in, and whatever state income tax department that you may be working with, if you're in a, a state that has taxation. 
um, or income tax. Uh, it's just knowing what their rules are to be in compliance. You know, filing on time is a big one, um, making sure that you're really organized and gathering your documents from the very first week of the year, I think is really important. And having a checklist, knowing that you, you know, how many accounts that you have. I mean, that is one thing I think that's probably one of the most surprising things to me is when someone comes in for their first um, professional tax return preparation or their first financial plan or or review there you know, they really don't know all the different accounts they kind of have them all over the place and things are electronic and digital and you have to remember your passwords and nobody remembers account numbers hardly anymore or phone numbers you know we're just not forced to do that sort of thing uh, but I would say being organized and having that checklist to make sure that you've got all the accounts um, most individuals have a tax return prepared from what we call source documents, 1099s, W-2s, that sort of thing. Um, a real estate, for example, uh, you're going to have to keep up and it's like having a small business. You, you have the responsibility of keeping up with all your income, the receipts coming in, uh, any um, expenses going out. Uh, utilities, any kind of a mortgage, real estate taxes, insurance, all those things. Um, but you just kind of have to be a little bit organized and um, giving a professional who's helping you be in compliance is also, um, I think it's important to make sure and give them a little more instead of a little less. So I think as long as you're documenting um, and the IRS only requires that you have contemporaneous records. And what that means is it doesn't have to be tracked and written down while those activities or expenses happened or occurred. You just have to have everything completely documented and supported and backed up, your mileage and things like that, by the time that you prepare your tax return and file it. Yeah. And that's I mean, that's a double-edged sword though, right? If you sort of say, oh, I'll just put it all together at the end of the year, you're like, oh yeah, forget it. <laughs> yeah. It, it gets it's a tougher. Yeah, the busier you are, um, you know, doing things a little bit more timely and, you know, again, having a dedicated book that's where you're just going to jot things down. A calendar is a really great way um, to document things. That way you're tr able to keep track of everything. Uh, it could be a... Um, you know, a charitable fundraiser that you have, or maybe you travel for continuing education or to, you know, for real estate is, you know, to go and, and look at properties. I mean, all of those, those miles would be potential deductions and that can add up really quickly. And, and it really doesn't matter what type of tax structure that you're using for real estate. It could be a corporation, could be an, a limited liability company. Um, you, you could have a partnership. Um, you could be an S corporation as well. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you could choose the taxable entity that you're going to be owning real estate properties with, just like any other business. And again, they're all going to have slightly different rules, but knowing the players, knowing the rules, and just simply trying to keep as best record as you possibly can. That's great. Great advice. A lot of our listeners are entrepreneurs and I think uh, starting your own business and getting, you know, going, especially if you're going from a corporate environment into starting your own business, it can feel very overwhelming as far as paperwork goes. Do you have any sort of tips for folks who are thinking about making that transition? Oh, goodness. I would suggest uh, getting a mentor. Um, <laughs> just just like with you and your your podcast, the, the Empower Your Inner Millionaire, um, you, you've gone through the process. You've got that hard-won wisdom, um, you know, and, you know, I call it hard-won wisdom because that's, you know, lessons that you learn the, the most difficult way, right? Um, so if you can learn from someone else's experience and take that shortcut abbreviation, I mean, there's all sorts of things. There's podcasts, there's uh, books, um, hiring a mentor, hiring a consulting, you know, just paying for that advice on the front end. Uh, I'm a big advocate of, uh, and we say it often here at Campbell Company, is uh, prior planning pays. Uh, so I think with starting your own business, um, you know, filing a married filing joint tax return for the very first time or getting through divorce and filing separately for the very first time. Those are all things that you want to just make sure that you're planning on the front end to make sure that you don't miss anything that can be to your advantage. Yeah, I know for uh, one of the hardest things I think for people when they're just starting out their own business is this record keeping and, you know, trying to figure out what 
you know, am I even making money, right? A lot of entrepreneurs are just like, I, you know, I have, there's money coming in, but then there's all this money coming out and I just don't really know, am I actually profitable? Um, what kinds of things can help people to get like a little handle on that? Are there any little sort of tips and tricks that you give your clients? Yeah, I, I would, record keeping is really important. You know, again, um, knowing, I always say, know the rules, you know, what is de deductible? What is allowable? How do I keep track and measure those things? Um, because if you've never done it before and you've always just, you know, been an employee, uh, you're right. You don't know how to keep track of your mileage to and from and what's allowable, um, what's deductible. Um, you know, getting your continuing education, getting your licenses, if you're going to become a realtor, uh, for example, um, all of those things are potential deductions. And, you know, what is just a really great way that's going to work for you? There's many apps out there um you know we have clients all the time you know that are you know reaching out and saying hey will this app work for our our record keeping and you know we'll you know give them some feedback and take a look at it and um you know it, just with us as well we have playbooks that someone who's starting a business from scratch you know it's it gives them all the cheat sheets you know what who are the players? What are the rules? Uh, it's going to vary by state and the type of industry or business that you're in. Um, but, you know, in general, hiring employees, hiring independent contractors, how do you, um, you know, keep track of that? What important information do you need on all those things? What type of receipts to keep? Um, you know, it, the list just goes on and on. But again, being prepared on the front end and knowing how what's going to be expected from you to stay in compliance. I mean, that if you even if you get audited uh, from a state or the IRS, um, the federal agency, you're, you're going to be prepared. Yeah, that's a great point. So do you work with clients outside the Florida area? We do. I mean, with, you know, with uh, technology, we've certainly been able to expand that. It's, it's uh, not the traditional um, you know, have to sit at the same table with someone. Um, you know, we have clients all over uh, the United States and, um, you know, you pretty much could do any tax return anywhere. We don't do international returns, but we do have some U.S. citizens that do uh, live abroad at times and uh, work with them as well. So there's really not much limitation, uh, maybe a few states that might be an exception to that that we choose not to work with. Um, but uh, yeah, we can help just about anyone. No, that's great. So you must have, to, it must be a lot to keep track of all the different tax rules in all the different states and all it must be horrifying. <laughs> it's, it's, um, if you want to know who's afraid of taxes, it's normally going to be the preparers because there's so <laughs> many things. I mean, the, the internal revenue service, the tax code here in the United States is, is one of the most complicated, uh, and it's ever changing. So it's just continuously keeping up with the rules, you know, the, the limitations, the numbers, the, the forms, I mean, things are continuously changing and it, it takes a lot of preparation each and every year. Um, so if you know someone who is a tax preparer, um, you know, make sure and give them some grace for a couple of months out of the year, because they do have a, a lot of stress and pressure. Um, you know, not just making it through day to day, but just really doing the best that they can for their clients to help them pay the least amount of taxes legally possible. That's, I, I love that you said that actually, because I've found that really good tax, really good CPAs, really good uh, tax repairs love the challenge of helping people to pay less taxes. And when you're working with someone who's not quite as good, they're, uh, they're really more afraid of being audited. And so I... <laughs> It's true. And, you know, it's, I think it's important to distinguish that there are tax preparers and there are tax planners. Uh, a tax preparer is dealing with all historical information. They're dealing with last year's information. It's history. There's not, let, there's not much you can do to change anything except for, you know, just kind of comb through some different categories and make sure you've got all the deductions and have accounted for everything. Um, but, you know, I and our firm, that is something that we have always attempted to to do differently for our clients, uh, whether it's a business owner, whether it's an individual, um, someone that's retired, it doesn't matter. Um, it's just not only looking at the history, because that is really important for a compliance with a tax return, but also looking at now. Where are you at now? What's going on now? Did you just buy a property? Did you just, you know, sell something? 
what's going on now, um, some other milestone in life, financial milestone, and what's happening next year and the year after. So it's it's always looking at past, present, and future. And I think if you're dealing with someone who is a little more than just a tax preparer, uh, you're going to get more value out of that. It's going to cost you more, um, but you know, the more designations, the more licenses, the more experience, uh, the more expertise someone is going to have from dealing with something in your industry. Uh, you don't want to be the first tax return that somebody prepares, and you don't want to be um, you know, in a category that's going to have a different type of tax return than others. Uh, you know, you want someone who is going to be a professional, but who's going to have, you know, clients with a lot more zeros behind the numbers, uh, you know, than, than yours necessarily, because then you're going to get that advantage of that knowledge and uh, planning opportunity. That yeah, comes I'm glad you made that distinction, Jackie, Jackie, because I think we do, we, we aren't always recognizing the very distinct difference between just a tax preparer like H&R Block and a tax planner who's actually going to sit down with you and make a plan for you to pay less taxes in the future or at right. least to you know figure figure out what's going on in the future and, and uh, make some plans for it. Yeah, I mean, the past is important, compliance is important, but planning is even more important. That's where you get that extra value, that multiplication of um, you know having it's a mentorship is really what it is and and having that professional uh, i call it a personal advisory board you know you have your your circle of advisors that you work with you're going to have your your of course your physical uh, advisory board and that's going to be your doctors your dentist uh, you you could have um you know homeopathic help or massage therapist whatever that might be to help you uh, do your things maybe even a personal trainer uh, and then you're going to have your emotional health. That's another piece of the pie. And uh, you're going to have, you know, maybe it's going to be a, a, a pastor or, um, you know, somebody that you're going to Bible study with, or maybe it's going to be a mental health counselor or even a, a mentor that's going to help you with part of your business and your personal and professional planning. Uh, and then you have your financial plan, and that's going to be all your financial professionals that you're working with, uh, you know, insurance, your uh, CPA, your, your maybe working with a certified financial planner, uh, your financial advisor, your attorney, all those things kind of should be working together and, um, you know, connecting what, whatever plan a tax attorney or an attorney sets up for you for your estate plan, you want to make sure that all the other professionals and those documents are titled the correct way, the real estate that you're owning. You want to make sure that you know, all those different aspects of your personal advisory board, that that financial sector are really uh, in sync and working together. And honestly, I find that is a, a big challenge and concern. Most financial professionals do not ever communicate. Yeah, that's an excellent point, Jackie. You're right. I mean, if you don't have your team is not working as a team, then people can be doing things at cross purposes and not even recognizing how it's, how it's not helping the client. Right. Yeah. So Jackie, what is your favorite part of your job? Do you have like something that really just lights you up that you are excited every time you get a chance to do it? I, I just love helping other people. I like um, listening to them to try to really filter through like, what are they just telling me or what is really the, the root issue? Um, I like solving problems. Uh, the more complex the problem, the more I like it. Um, and I, you know, if I don't know the answer, I just like, you know, helping refer them to someone else and making that connection. I love collaborating with other professionals. I think that's one of the reasons that it is the the main reason that I became dually licensed um, as soon as a CPA could have other professional designations. Um, you know, I became a certified financial planner because I saw firsthand that, you know, all those things are interconnected at some point in your life and uh, just the importance of having those professional, um, the knowledge where you have one person that's going to be more like your quarterback uh, and kind of connecting and making everybody else is, is kind of on target and, and in uh, communication with them. So I would say the more complex love solving problems and really love uh, working with multi-generational um, wealth. I'm, I'm working with some grandchildren of some of my longest term clients, and it, it's just such an honor and a privilege to really, you know, help uh, the next, well, actually the second generation, um, third generation 
um, with their financial planning. And um, I, I love love it when kids are, you know, being taught some really good habits instead of just being spoiled and getting whatever they want. Yeah, it's absolutely true because it is definitely possible for children to erode the wealth of the previous generation in a very short time. <laughs> That is true. They actually have books and there's a lot of old um, tales about that. It's called uh, Shirtless to Shirtless in Three Generations. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Jackie, is there anything that you really want me to ask you that I haven't thought to ask yet? Is there anything that you really want to make sure that we talk about? Well, you know, I, first of all, I, I admire you and applaud you for doing what you're doing. You're taking your hard won wisdom uh, from, you know, kind of being in debt and, and being vulnerable and talking about that and, you know, how you really started tracking all of your income and your expenses just to really come up with a plan and uh, set yourself up for success in the future. And, you know, not everyone is going to inherit a lot of money. So uh, being intentional, being um, prepared, I think is really two great things to kind of always think about. And, um, you know, don't just live day to day and just think things are going to happen to you or for you. Uh, just being real intentional and learning from a mentor like you listening to your podcasts and, um, you know, they may not do exactly what you've done, but certainly, um, just take some of those tips, those nuggets of wisdom and, and, uh, you do the best that you can. And the other thing is, is some advice that I was given several years ago, uh, from one of my mentors, uh, Dan Sullivan, and a strategic coach, and it's always have a bigger future than your past. So I think if you can just take some of those things and just always like be in that open learning mindset, I think you'll you'll have a successful life. Thanks, Jackie. That's beautiful. So how about your podcast? Tell us how we can tell us the names of your podcast and how we can tune in and listen to them. Yeah, a Beyond the Money podcast uh, is one of them. I've been doing that for quite a few years, have over 250 episodes. So everything about a financial life or a life, really, uh, we deal a lot with entrepreneurs. We deal a lot with um, someone who is transitioning to and through retirement. Uh, so, and it's more than just the money. So uh, various topics come on there, health, uh, finance, and um, you know, physical as well. Uh, physical life, parts of your life. And uh, the other one that I do is Beyond the Badge. And that one I do alongside my husband, uh, Scott Campbell, and he's a retired law enforcement officer. So going through that life uh, for the first responders and having many family members who uh, are still living that that life, um, you know, it's a totally different world, but eventually, you know, they get beyond the badge, they retire. And I think helping them transition to and through retirement is really important in their second act because typically they retired at such a young age. They, they kind of don't know what to do past the gun and the badge. So, um, we have some really good conversations on there. And, um, we also have a radio show beyond the money that we do and, uh, the book be prepared and, my win file that's a document storage system where we organize help clients just really organize all those things that you need that someday uh someone will have to come behind you in your financial life and be your cfo and you know if you're not a great record keeper you probably need to have a my win file in place <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't want people cursing you what after you're gone <laughs> Yeah, if you, yeah, if the stories, you know, there's a lot of hard one wisdom. And I always ask the questions for someone that loses a family member or has to become that, um, you know, the, the personal representative or the successor trustee, whatever it is. And, um, you know, it's just like coming behind someone and figuring out their unique filing system. And if you think about it, like the, just in photographs, you know, years ago, we had the one tens and the Polaroid and we had the photo albums um, that are probably really organized from our early years. And, um, you know, now it's, it's on your phone, on your tablet, on your computer, in the cloud. And that's the exact same way our financial life is. So having those passwords, having that path and the key and the checklist to help somebody else come behind you. Um, I mean, that's, that's just a great way to be prepared and, um, you know, make it a little bit easier for those that you love and care about the most. Yeah, that's such a great point because it's not just a shoebox that someone's going to find in your closet anymore, right? Exactly. <laughs> it could be anywhere. 
it's all <laughs> over the place. And, and, you know, in the old days, we waited for a paper statement to come in the mail. Like, well, I'll know if they have a safe deposit box. I'll know if they have a checking account um, or a savings account or a retirement account. But, um, you know, it's not all, um, you know, paper anymore. Yeah. And that could be a whole nother conversation is preparing for that kind of, you know, eventuality or possibility, but what's the best way for people to reach you, Jackie, if they're ready to get prepared and take charge of their lives and get, get on with a financial plan? Yeah, just, uh, we have a phone number 352-683-7365. Uh, and also mycampbellandco.com. That's probably the best way to get a hold of us. Uh, there's just a drop down box there and just, just reach out. Be happy to help and give some tips. And uh, so grateful for your time today, Christine. I really appreciate it. And again, I'm so super proud of you for being vulnerable and uh, sharing your hard won wisdom with everybody with your book and your podcast. Oh, Jackie, thank you so much. And I'm so impressed with you, the way you've got, you really help people to, to make it easy for them to become organized and to deal with this sort of not that popular topic, right? I mean, everybody wants to have lots of money, but people don't really want to talk about the best way to prepare themselves for that possibility. So I That's really right. admire all the things that you're doing. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you, listener, for listening. Think right now, someone you know who maybe isn't where they 100% want to be financially, or maybe they are, but they still need to be a little bit more organized. They'd love to hear this advice that Jackie shared with us today and share this episode with them because they will thank you. And we thank you for being with us today. Have a fantastic week. 